As a tech nerd, I like to explore different technologies like Vim. Oh, sorry. Like Vim. Or maybe Vue.js. Maybe Nux.js. Maybe Docker. Maybe learning about web servers. Maybe learning about how to configure Nginx. Maybe learning how to hack NASA with HTML. But sometimes I can't do those things just because of my crappy laptop. So whenever I try to run a Nux.js application, it takes forever to compile. And then I came across Code Server, which allowed me to do the development using cloud computers. Well, it doesn't mean you can't do the development without using Code Server. It's just that I love VS Code and it makes it so easy to develop application in it. So a couple of days ago, I posted this uh, information or a little question kind of thing on Instagram as well as WhatsApp and on my discord server as well so i was asking if you guys want a video on code server like uh, where i can demonstrate you guys what code server is and what can you actually do with it and how to install it on a remote server so in this specific video i will be covering that specific topic so all right so i'm going to first of all go to this specific repository which is code server so this is the official repository of code server so here, if I refresh it, I'm not getting these images. Just give me a second. All right, so this is how code server looks like. It's basically VS Code. It's exactly VS Code, but you can run it in, in, in a browser. So that's a plus point. So you can run it on any computer. You, you just need the address of your virtual machine where you have hosted it. So if you go through this documentation, they will explain you how to install it. And so, and I'm also going to do the same thing here and I will show you how you can do the simple development using cloud computer. So basically using the core server. So I will open my terminal. So here I'm using a drop down terminal because I recently find, found out that XFC4 terminal has this uh, drop down thing. If you do XFC dash terminal and pass the dash dash wait it's xfc4 terminal and then if you pass the dash dash drop down flag so it will open up in a drop down mode instead of a normal terminal so which is like super cool thing so now i'm going to connect to my remote server using ssh if you do not know how to host a virtual machine or you know how to create a virtual machine you can watch one of my previous videos that i will mention in the description so in which i actually mentioned uh, how to create a virtual machine on microsoft azure Alright, so here we are. I have a simple VM. If I do Neo fetch here, you will see that it is a virtual machine and it contains about 4 gigs of RAM. Alright, so this is the configuration that we are using. So what I'm going to do is, in order to install it, you need to do this command. Alright, so if you copy it and uh, let me just go to the full screen so that it looks better. Show to our full screen. Let me increase the font size. All right, let's do new fetch one more time. So we have this virtual machine here. So I'm going to paste that specific command. So it's going to ask me to paste it. And yeah, once you paste it, it will start installing the code server. So it can take up a while, so let's just wait. All right, so once it is installed, you can see they're saying, if you, if you don't want or need to run a background service, you can use this specific command called code server. All right, so once you install that specific code server instance, so if you do code dash server, you will see that now it is actually running that specific code server instance on this specific URL. So you can see it's your local IP address calling on port 8000. So the way to access is, uh, if you want to access it, you need to create a SSH tunnel. So let's close it by typing control C. So, and I will get out of the server as well. All right. So now I will do SSH and Vivek as coder, and then I will type dash L. If you do not know what, uh, what SSH tunneling is. So my friend Rishi, uh, made a specific video where he explained it in a really nice manner. So you can watch that specific video. I will mention it also. So you need to specify the port you want to, uh, basically, uh, forward. So if I hit enter, you need to again provide the password so it will work in the same manner so you can see now again i got the access but at this stage if i do code server so now it is again going to start now what i'm going to do is i will open a new tab here and go to local server local host in 8000 all right so once i go to that specific port so what is actually happening here my 
um, my code server is now running inside the browser. So the port 8000 is of uh, the remote machine is now accessible from my main machine, like my, my local machine. In your case, it might ask for a password so that you can change by going to the this is specific path that you can see currently on screen and changing the password thing. All right, so this is a code server instance and this is uh, a Django application that I opened here. So here you can see you will get the access to terminal and you can do almost any task that you would normally do with the code server. You can install extensions that you want. You can uh, install the color scheme you want. You can change the font also. If you do want to know how to change the font in the remote machine, you can obviously uh, comment in the video and I will start making the video on it as well. So if I do control shift P, you will see this thing here. You can change the color scheme also. I have installed a couple of color schemes. So yeah, this is the basic example. So this way you can run it. But the thing is you need to run it every single time. So in order to avoid this, what you can do is first of all, let's close it. Now we are getting these warning. It's because the code server is currently running. I'm going to close it. So now if I open it and if I closed it, you can see there's nothing. Now I'm going to activate it as a service. So using system CTL, uh, so I will, the, I will do sudo and dash dash now flag. So dash dash now flag will actually enable it and start it as well. And then you need to provide the code dash server and then at and then you need to provide the user. So you can pass in the variable dollar user. So it will be open for this specific user. So once done, now you can see I am not running the code server, but it is running in the background. So now if I do the same thing here, if I go to that specific port, all right, so once I visit it, you will see that it is still running. So this is how you can uh, run it. So you can just log into your machine, then the remote SSH tunneling will be set up and you can directly access it using the local host 8000. One more thing that you can do if you are on Brave browser, you can make it a progressive web app so you can see I have already made it you will see a plus button here so you can click on this specific one and click on open so it will open it in a new tab but at this stage you will not get this bullshit which is like it's a bit it's a bit annoying it occupies some space like right so you can see this bar and other things so you're not going to get those information here so which is a nice point so and you will also get this icon now on the desktop so if I go on my desktop you will see this code server here and you can directly run it if I close it and if I double click on it it is running all right so that's it for this specific short video and this is a really helpful if you are having a low-end machine if you want to do certain tasks that you can't do or uh, or you're facing some issue uh, with your problem so you can do it on virtual machines so yeah this is it for this specific video we will meet in the next one